Hi, I'm Lee Mamalan. In this video, we're going to look at Ableton Live's modulation tools. So if you look at the history of studios, modulation processing or modulation effects are classic processing effects that have their own ability within the unit themselves to create movement. And that's what modulation stands for, the, the ability for something to affect the properties of something else. So the classic modulation effects are chorus, flanger and phaser, and they group slightly differently. Chorus and flanger derive around delays happening to the signal and then them being modulated, so they're not a fixed delay, they change over time. And then phaser is slightly different. What actually happens is certain parts of your sound, so certain parts within the frequencies of your sound, have their phase shifted, which creates a different relationship of that modified frequency and all the surrounding frequencies as well. So let's have a look at chorus and flanger first and then we'll move into phaser. So I'm just going to load in chorus at the very beginning onto a whole track. Now you wouldn't normally apply it this way. It's very rarely I ever find that I'm applying it to a whole mix. Um, it's more something you might apply either a single sound or a group or a bus level where you're processing more than one sound at once. Try and create a sense of unity between different sounds. So I've got the chorus turned off and then I'll turn it on so you can hear what it's doing. Okay, so there's a sense of movement there. It's nothing too strong, but it is creating a sense of movement to the sound that's different from the original sound. That's what chorus is good for. Good for getting a sense of depth, sense of movement, and a, a sense of kind of thickness to a sound as well. So let's grab a flanger and we'll drag that onto there and see how it differs. So it got louder, that's one thing. You have to be careful with that in terms of the levels that you work at. Um, but there's a much more metallic, prominent movement to this. One, it has very sharp kind of peaks and troughs in the sound, so we can really hear what it's doing to the sound. It's very obvious. And secondly, the speed at which it does, it's what we call its modulation, that ability for one part within the device to affect another, is the speed that it's happening is much slower than a chorus, so it's much more perceivable over time. So let's have a look at the third unit, which is phaser. Okay, now, the phaser default is a little bit different than the other two defaults. The chorus default loading state has modulation happening, there's movement, so does flanger, but the phaser has no movement. So let's have a look at why that is happening. So phaser has various different controls, which I'll explain in due course, but we have an LFO amount section here. Now an LFO is just like an oscillator or a sound source within a synthesizer that normally will be played fast enough that we perceive it as a musical pitch. So we're talking about 30 or 40 cycles per second or hertz is the about of repeats will happen in a, in a sound per second that we can perceive its pitch. An LFO, which is a low frequency oscillator, is completely different because it's played so low in pitch that we never hear it through speakers, but it's running at a rate per second that's actually discernible as rhythm or movement over time. So the phaser has an LFO, and at the moment it is the shape I've just done with my hand, it is a sine wave, so it goes up and then down and then it repeats, it goes back up and then down however many times per second, so at the moment 0.5 times per second. So if we increase that, we'll hear the phaser starting to move. So let's increase the speed. Okay, so we can hear that a little bit more now. So the phaser has a similar kind of sense of movement over time as the flanger, but it's nowhere near as metallic sound. It's not transforming the properties of this. If anything, I, I would say it softens the sound. So it's useful if you want to give something like a bit more of a, an older sort of um, older generation of, of processing sound. Um, so let's have a look at chorus, phaser and flanger in respect of what they're actually doing and how we can control that. 
So we have a sawtooth here. I'll just turn the chorus off for a minute. Okay, so a regular sawtooth waveform. Um, and I'm just going to press Q whilst I've got the device uh, selected so I can reload in the default state of this. And what we're going to do is try and strip back the modulation that's happening within this device and then we'll add what we want it to have. So in order to do that, as I said earlier on, chorus and flanger are based around delay lines. They're, they're based around copies of the signal being or happening at a later time than the actual input signal is happening. So we have delay one and delay two. So I'm going to turn off delay two. Delay one has the addition of a high pass filter. So anything above the particular frequency I've set here on this dial passes through and anything below it gets rejected. So I don't want anything rejected. I want all the sounds to come through as best as possible to begin with. So I'll pull that all the way down. And finally, this modulation section here, there's an amount control and then a rate control, just like the LFO in phaser. So the speed of the modulation is set by rate, but the amount, as in how much it can move the sound from its original position, is controlled by amount. So basically, the first delay line is set to delay the signal by three milliseconds, and then the amount is set to um, uh, give enough movement to that by 1.9 milliseconds. So it can deviate around that position by 1.9 milliseconds. So I'm gonna remove the amount as we listen to it and we'll hear what it's doing. Now all we're hearing is the input signal and the delayed signal. So I'm gonna change the properties of the delayed signal by moving its actual default setting. Okay, I like the sound around where I've got it, and I like the fact if I go up a little bit or down a little bit, it sounds nice too. I don't want to do that with my mouse. I don't want to deal with automation. I want to use the modulation properties of this device. So I'm going to increase the amount now and create that movement. Okay, so that's modulated. So the chorus is now creating a sense of thickening to the sound, much like detuned oscillators when you use a synthesizer to create a classic sound like a, a Reese sound or Reese bass. So um, I can control kind of the balance of this using the dry wet. And I can sort of pr over pronounce the sound by increasing this feedback amount, which is taking the process version of the signal and running it back in and doing the same treatment, a second, third, fourth, fifth or sixth time, up to the point where the feedback starts actually creating a resonant tone to the sound. So let me increase the feedback. And at that extremity, you can hear the movement of that delay line being moved. The other thing we have is the second delay line. So it has three modes. At the moment, I turned it off, so it has off mode. That means there isn't a second delay line introduced to the signal. By the way, there are two delay lines technically per delay. We have a left delay and a right delay. And at the moment, we're hearing stereo because there's a delay happening differently to the left and the right. So let's introduce another delay line using this. If we set it to fixed mode, it's going to be a fixed delay, just like when we had no modulation amount set to this one. So the actual uh, distance in time of a delay line can create resonances to an original musical pitch. So I'm sweeping there to find kind of compatible or harmonically related positions. Hold shift while you're moving that if you want finer control. Um, and then I can set it to be modulated. So it will actually receive modulation from the internal LFO. So it's increasing the density of the chorus basically. The last thing to mention here is that we have a link button. So if I want to have the actual delay lines exactly the same, I can press the link button and now they're unified 
and I only need to move one or the other to create a difference between those two different delay lines. Now what I have is delay one is being modulated, but I've set delay two to be fixed, so it's not being modulated. So one of the delay lines is creating the movement and the other one is creating that sense of kind of pitch to the sound that's not moving as well. Lots of ways we can do chorus. If you want to explore it in a, a deeper level, go to the presets. And there's plenty more there. So now we're going to look at flanger. Now flanger is the same principles as chorus, so we won't dwell on the actual mechanics behind it, but we'll flick through the presets to see what this offers in terms of how this sound can be processed. Okay, so that's based much more around shorter delay times where the two sounds are very close to each other in terms of time so they have a chance to react a lot more with each other and cause cancellations in the sound which creates this resonant metallic kind of sound. So in terms of properties, let's just load in this original flanger preset. So if I take the LFO off, we've got a fixed flanger, there's no modulation happening. So that's me changing dry and then the delayed signal there in terms of delay time. And then feedback is again that thing of taking the output and running it back to the input and it pronounces the actual, the tonality of our uh, flanging. So I'm gonna reduce that just to make it a bit less metallic. Now we've got a polarity. So polarity of the feedback, we can change that. And um, the LFO can be turned on. And this time let's create a rhythmic, in synchronous, synchronized version of the uh, modulation. So I'm gonna take the rate of the LFO and rather than it be free running and independently going at whatever rate is set to, I'm gonna set it to synchronize and let's just set it to every bar. So these are divisions of the bar. So if it's one, it's no division of the bar, it's just a bar. Um, and let's set it to a ramp down LFO here which means it'll go from a high value to a low value every bar. Now earlier I mentioned that there's two delay lines available in a chorus. In the flanger it's the same, but we can actually modify the relationship of the, the delay modulation on the left and the delay modulation on the right. So at the moment you can hear this stepping every half bar. So we've got the first um, LFO on our on our left going from top to bottom and then the, the one on the right is halfway behind it so it doesn't start at the same position. This is because the right hand uh, modulation is flipped. It's 180 degrees out of phase with the left hand. So we get this up and then the next one goes up as the other one's coming down. So we get this sense of stereo, but if you wanna create a uniform mono sound where it's unified between the left and right speakers, we can set phase to zero. And now both sides are being modulated delay-wise exactly the same way. Okay, so there's an envelope on here, but just to keep time as short as possible, I'm gonna to move to the phase and we'll use the envelope on here. But the envelope is a way of taking the changes in volume of the input signal and allowing that to modify and become a modulator of the flanging effect as well. So let's just move over to the phaser. So again, a quick look through the presets to see what's possible. Okay, so you can get that sense of what I said earlier. Similar to flanging in the respect, you get a sense of uh, real-time movement where you know it's going up or down at a certain rate but the actual tonality of it's very smooth compared to the resonant characteristic of flanging. So I'm gonna just load up that preset again and let's have a look at that envelope control this time. Now it's not gonna work on this sound because it only has a slight peak at the beginning, which would be an increase in amplitude, which can push the envelope to take 
the actual phasing effect up or down. So we want something that's going to be rhythmic. So let's go to our drum track and let's process that. So I'll add a phaser to the drum track. I'm going to just tune in the actual frequency and the feedback amount of the phaser to my ears for something that's compatible with this source sound. Okay, that sounds like a compatible kind of characteristic to give to the sound. And then rather than reaching for the LFO, let's reach for the envelope. So the envelope's listening to low to high values and then it'll apply that as a modulator to the actual um, frequency of the uh, poles within the phaser. Now, if we set it to a negative envelope, as in it takes the amplitude still going from low to high values, it'll just change the actual position of the frequency in a negative aspect. So rather than pushing the frequency up every time we have a, a loud peak in volume going into the actual uh, processor, it will instead push the frequency down as it goes through. So you can choose which direction it modulates the signal. So what I'm changing now is it's like a synthesizer's envelope, which is a, a shape over time. And even though there might be a very loud kick drum that's telling the envelope to go straight up to its highest value, I can choose to make it a little bit lazy and, and slow the attack stage, so that initial increase of volume. I can tell the envelope to just take a little bit longer than the kick is to get to a high value. And that, that kind of creates a bit more movement to the sound. Same with the release. When the volume drops down of the signal going into that envelope, it will, could be immediate, we could set it to the lowest release time possible, or we could let it be a bit more gradual and smooth things out a little bit. Now I'm actually very happy with that as it is, without reaching for the pole settings or the earth um, space settings to change the kind of spacing of those poles and the color setting to then tune the earth setting as well. But of course I can go in there and experiment with that to the sound as I want it to work. Dry wet's very important here. It's quite an extreme effect at times, just as the others are too. So always experiment with how much of the actual effect you want on there, either to add to the sound and give it a bit more substance, or whether you want to have a very extreme sound, maybe high feedback and quite a high wet signal to be able to create quite an extreme sound to this too. So that's the basics of our modulation tools in Ableton Live. We have chorus, flanger, and phaser. And we've gone through all the mechanics of setting this up. Let's just very quickly have a look at how we can apply some of them to some of the sounds. So on my introduction section of this, I have a pad kind of atmospheric sound, and I have like a, a melodic whale sound as well. So I'm gonna add chorus to one and flanger to the other. So I want to add a sense of movement to this, but nothing that's noticeable as a special or an additional effect to this. So this is where chorus is great. I'm just going to add this in, use the XY control to tune it in by ear, and then have a play around with feedback levels, how pronounced it will be, and then dry wet to balance it. Okay, that's dialed in nice for me. I had to listen to the mix just to make sure I wasn't going too far, too subtle on there. And let's try flanger on the darkness setting. So if I move to the right hand side, one being one bar, if I move it to the right, I can actually set it to two bars or four bars or the extreme setting of eight. If it was an introduction sound like this, it would make sense that it might start off, let's say it's a crescendo, so I'll set it to a ramp up and then let's keep the left and right still independent in terms of their phase settings and let's, uh, let's see what it sounds like.
Okay, that works well as an eight eight bar kind of crescendo to a next section. It's kind of uh, called the aeroplane type of noise because it obviously sounds like an aeroplane kind of taking off or flying by. So modulation tools, there are more of them technically. We have auto pan inside Ableton Live and also auto filter also has an LFO section as well that can be used to modulate the filter settings. But the classic tools, chorus, flanger and phaser, we've covered how they work and how we can start to apply them within our music making as well.